Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to wake early this morning and see the sun bright shine. We thank you, dear Lord, for uh, this auspicious occasion, uh, that even in this Advent season, you've granted us the opportunity uh, to hear good news, not just from the Savior, but even uh, from this great entity, this great organization. Uh, God, it's our desire that you continue to cover and even allow your favor uh, to be over the Central Alabama Jaguars, Father God. And in this moment, God, we thank you uh, that you've given them opportunity to share good news, Father God, that will bless this community, that will bless this city, Father God, and even bless the state of Alabama. We thank you, God, for the owners. We thank you, Father God, for the coaches. We thank you, God, even for the players. And uh, we most graciously, Father God, give you all of the glory, the honor, and the praise from all that shall be sh said and shared even in, on this occasion. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We all say amen. 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 Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Rashawn Purnell, president of the Central Alabama Jaguars. We bring you greetings from Montgomery, Alabama. We thank everyone for tuning in. We thank everyone for coming out today. Um, on behalf of the entire staff and players, future players, and community of Montgomery, we thank you for the opportunity for allowing us to bring greetings to you today. Uh, right now, um, I'm going to turn it over to our team market owner, Clark Adams, who's going to give you a brief summary on why we're here today. Do, do, do we need the microphone? No. Okay. Uh, greetings again. I'm Clark Adams. Uh, kind of born and raised here in Montgomery. Um, as is most of our our staff and most of the people that you see on the on the stage on the, the table, and that that's really why the reason we're here. Um, me growing up here, Cortez growing up here, Glaze and Mr. BJ, um, we got a chance to kind of see some things that we wanted to change. Um, one, first of all, being there's a lot of talent in our state, in our city but there's not a lot of networks for them to be able to keep the visibility, to move to the next step. So I, myself and again our, our staff said, what can we do to, uh, to enhance that? So Marquise, BJ, Cortez, they started this dream a couple years ago. A lot of players, hey, let's play, let's get in these leagues. Let's do what we can to enhance what we're doing. Um, with that came something that our community is going to benefit from. Because along with the games, these guys kept our players in mentorship positions to help our community from camps, clinics. They're, they're always out doing something. Um, when we grew up, there was that village. The village was lost. So with Central Alabama Jaguars, we want to bring the village back to our community, not just Montgomery the central Alabama region, and so forth. We want to be able to utilize our guys to help. Um, we're going to be a part of the community, and we want the community to be a part of what we're doing. And the only way you can make that happen is you got to have a partnership. So that's the reason we wanted to come before everyone who's viewing, everyone that's here. We appreciate that. But the main thing is we have to keep our partnership. It's not about the Central Alabama Jaguars. At the end of the day, it's about the little ones. Having that person or having that group that they can go to, invent, and ask questions, and learn. Um, I played the game, so there's a lot of guys on this on this stage in, in this table. And the main thing that we we had was we had that guidance, we had that tutelage, and that's that's what the Central Alabama Jaguars want to commit to doing. We want you to come to the games, we want you to have fun, but when you leave, we want you leaving knowing, hey, these guys have taken a step to help. How come I can't do it? What can I do to help? Now, I've, I've come out a couple times, the facility that we're in, this young man right here made it available for us. There's a lot of places that won't do that. And so that's help. And that's all we're asking. You got a great group of guys, a great group of players that are talented. 
let's help, let's build it, let's get to the point to where um, we can be proud that we have something built in you. And you'll see, we, we, we talk about it all the time, the things that we can touch, the things that we can impact. But now we have a professional team that we can do that with. You know, that's, that's unheard of for a lot of places. And a little place like Montgomery, Alabama can have a huge effect thanks to the Central Alabama Jaguars, thanks to Pastor Lee Walker, thanks to Dave Magley and his group. It all starts here, right with this, this, this broadcast, this announcement. And it's an open invitation for everyone to, to come out and help. Let's change this thing. We see all the negative stuff on TV. Let's do something positive that we all can say, hey, I had a touch in that. I touched that, even if it's just for a brief moment. It's about getting to the next step, not just for the players, but for everyone that's involved, especially our youngsters. We got to give them a ray of hope. Allow them to get mentors, to have everyday heroes that they can touch on a daily basis. They don't just have to watch them on YouTube or whatever the social media or on television. They can touch these heroes. And that, that's why Central Alabama Jaguars and all our guys, I know that's why we're here. That's why the, T, the TBL is here to keep those dreams alive, but teach. There's so many positive things. I'm just going to mention one. There's a financial literacy program that the TBL makes available to us. And guess what they encourage us to do? Go share it with your communities. You know, 78, 80% of the people out there making money don't know what to do with it. They're financially illiterate. And we have a program in place with people going through so we get the certifications. So we can not just teach our athletes, but our community, the community leaders. There's a lot of those guys that are out there that don't have that literacy. So again, I want to thank you guys. We appreciate you. But my prayer, my hope is for everyone to help. Do what you can to help. Because we're going to be here. We're going to be here, I promise you. We're going to do our job. Next, we'll turn it over to Mr. Magnet from the TBA. Thank you. Uh, so TBL stands for The Basketball League. We're real creative in our naming. Um, we, um, this is our fifth season. Uh, we're unique in that we're the first and only male professional league of any sport that's owned by a female and that's owned by an African American. There's nothing special about being a female African American. There's a whole lot special about being a black mom. As a mother, our CEO sets the tone for what we do. She looks at our young men as if they were our children. And what do we need to do to help them? That's where the financial literacy comes from. But beyond that, how do we teach them how to be more than just entertainers? How do we teach them that this is not the end of your life? That when you're done playing, you can do something with basketball. The NBA last year had 22% of its athletes, 22% of its coaches were African American. 67% of his players were. This year they hired a bunch of African American coaches and they're up to 43%. 94% of our athletes are African American. We want our coaches to look like our players, we want our executives to look like our coaches, and we want our owners, our team market owners. And they're called team market owners because you don't own the players, you own the market. You own the right to help them, that's what you want. That's all from, from our CEO. Again, in the NBA, it goes from 22% to 10% executives to Michael Jordan owns the team. Our league is much more, more, more like the 94. So 94% to about 75% of our coaches, about 75% of our executives, and about 65, 75% of our, our teams look like our players. So we're giving our guys something to dream a bigger dream than just playing basketball. It's got to be bigger than that. Our league is entering its fifth season. We started with eight teams in year one, grew to 10 in year two, grew to 12 in year three, and then the dreaded COVID hit. Oh, Lord, what are we going to do? All of our teams pay on time. The very few teams pay the full pop up front. They all pay on time. Well, we kind of, kind of tone deaf, Pastor, if we're going to say, listen, I know you can't make any money because you're not allowed to have anybody in your gym, but I need my money. Get, hook me up. So what do you do at that point? We had two options. We could shut our doors or we could go forward. 
So last year we went from 12 teams to 29 teams. 2019 started, 2019 is finished. This year we're at 43 teams. Again, what that means, that means that 550 to 600 young men will get a chance to be pro basketball players, professional, getting paid, with live streaming that goes all over the world, with stats that go all over the world, with high quality websites that yours just went live on. That, that we do, we build for the teams because we want to build something that really gives value. All of our teams wear the same brand uniform, Infinite Apparel, high quality product. They look the same, they're cut the same. We play in good venues. It's important to us that to be a pro, you have to be a pro. You have to look like a pro, walk like a pro, act like a pro. And the result is 190 guys last year signed to play basketball around the world. 12 of them are playing in, in, in the G League, and one just yesterday played in his first NBA game. So we have been able to provide a platform for young men to travel around the world and fulfill their dreams. But our dancers are getting jobs, our announcers are getting jobs, our, 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 our referees are going up to the G League and the NBA. We are a showcase league for everybody that touches us. All we ask in exchange is that our young men take the blessing of celebrity and impact lives. We know teachers, parents, kids turn us off at a certain point, but they don't turn off their heroes. So when that hero walks into their school and he's 6'9 and he's got a blonde faux hawk, and you know he ain't probably going to this school, when he says, I'm here because I heard you're struggling, your dad's not around or you're struggling academically, or I heard you got in some trouble, I have all that happen to me. Why are you here? Because I want you to know it's going to be okay. And when you put your hand on the shoulder and you convey that, that, that emotion, that transference of, of, of faith that we believe in you, we have power. And when we teach our young men how to have that power, we can change the world. And that's how we're doing it one community at a time. Montgomery is the perfect community for us. Central Alabama allows us to grow into Georgia better. It ties into our panhandle team in Tallahassee will allow us to go to Mississippi. We have a team in Louisiana. Eventually, there will be a whole region that will just be the Mid-South, and it'll be, it'll be full of teams. This is the first one that we need to have prosper. So we're excited to be here. We're thrilled with the brand of basketball. It is not what you've seen before. I know the Jaguars have been here. They've played hard. They provide a good product. I see the stands full, and I think, my goodness, when they see what we're bringing, oof, this town could, this town could light up with what it could be, because it is fun. Our best player last year is making a whole lot of money in Turkey. I mean, our best players are doing really well, and you'll see those guys coming through here. Seven footers, rim rockers, looking in the rim. MVP of the Japanese league, I just saw today. It's coming from our league. It's all these people, opportunities to go something. So that's what we want to do. We want to provide these opportunities for young men, and we'll have expectations of them to do great things for their community in exchange for that. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll hear from a basketball coach of the Central Alabama Jaguars, Mr. Cortez Harris. Mr. Cortez, I'll let you come in. Do I get to stay here? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Cortez Harris. Uh, I've been coaching for over 20 years, uh, from the great leagues to AAU to uh, now a semi-pro team, and now I'm over here uh, to TBL. Uh, it's very important to me about coaching is my passion. Uh, to touch kids and make them motiv motivate them to do better. Uh, we have a, a host of kids that we got in college. Now we hope to get them to the next level. Higher than where we are now at the TBL, maybe we get them overseas, maybe we get them to the G League, maybe we get them to the NBA. Uh, our main concern is making sure we teach them, mentor them, and make sure they understand they have to give back the same way we give. So basically, that's it in a nutshell for me. All right. Last but not least, our director All of right. personnel, Mr. Marquise Glaze. I'm Marquise Glaze, uh, director of player personnel. I uh, really don't have too much to say to you guys. It took a lot. But, um, I'm just here to help the coach out and uh, where I'm wearing different hats. 
So anything that's needed for me, from uh, player evaluations, uh, helping out with scouting, anything of that nature. I mean, I'm here for that. Uh, of course, man, we want guys to come in and work hard. Guys willing to um, accept coaching. Um, of course, man, we're looking for shooters. We're looking for everything right now. So, uh, me and coach, we talk every day in and day out. Uh, we hit the road. Any chance we get to find any type of talent that we need. Because um, Montgomery, is, it's been a long time uh, for a situation like this. Like uh, Mr. Magley and Clark, we looped right on earlier. Um, this town been hungry for talent, opportunity. So, we want you guys to get behind this opportunity. And uh, these guys going to definitely be in the community. Uh, these guys going to definitely be hands on with everything Montgomery needs them to do. And uh, we, this picture right here that you see, we're going to be hands on. So we're going to be everywhere. And we want you guys to be behind this team fully. And uh, we're going to put on the show. <laughs> and I, I really believe that day. We got, we got some guys uh, that's uh, hungry right now to put the jersey on and, and show Montgomery what they got. And uh, we got a lot in store. Thank you, guys. So there's, there's it's a 24 game season, played over 13 weeks. Easter weekend, we don't play games, although we do have an all-star game. This year, it'll be in Syracuse, New York, and it'll be against the NBL Canada. So it's another pro league, a very good pro league that pays actually quite a bit more than we do. It's going to be a great opportunity for us, because that's a spot for our guys, one of the options for our guys to go to. We actually are playing 24 games against them this year, plus this All-Star game. Our games are almost all played on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Typically one home, one away, but not always that way. Um, we, we have 24 teams will get to the playoffs. We play best two out of three to have a champion. So the lower seed, the, the worst record, gets the first home game. The higher seed gets the next two, in case there is two. And we play through till we get to a national champion. And that will be done the same way, just like the NBA does. So, you know, we play NBA rules, 24-second uh, shot clock, NBA lines. The only rule that's different, doesn't apply to you, but the only rule that's different is we play the FIBA offensive, defensive, goaltending rule. And since you can't touch the rim, that's why I said that. <laughs> um, but with that rim, if that ball is, once it hits the rim, it's live. So you can, defensive, you can knock it off the ball, or offense, you can tip it back in and dunk it back in. So it makes it a little, more exciting game. The fans never understand that, so they will be yelling the first few games. Well, that's goaltending. That's not. But it's not. But it's it's a it's a really fun level of basketball. And again, we play the NBA rules because that's what we're going to get to. So we have to show them NBA numbers. That's why the stats are so important. This way, it means it means something to them. I just want to add one last thing um, for Montgomery, Central Alabama, January 9th. The Lockhart Arena, we're doing our first trial. Um, for those who dare to say that they're ready for this league, here's your opportunity. Here's your opportunity. And I can let you know there are going to be players coming from all over. Because their mindset is, if I get there first and I impress them, I got a better shot. So all we can say is we have a link. You'll see posters around. You're going to do some commercials on the, on, the, on the airwaves, on the radio, just to make sure you guys can't say, I didn't know about it. Because here's the perfect opportunity for you to accept the challenge and at least put your name in the hat. Don't be one of those ones that come out later and say, man, I can play better than that guy when you didn't even come out for the trial. That's your fault. That's not anyone's fault in the organization because we're gonna make sure that you guys know about it, you know where it is, and just come out and do your thing. You know, it's, it, I wish when I was coming up, we had something like this. Because it was always guesswork for me. Man, who can I go to, who can I, how can I go to? Oh, come over here and pay. Well, you guys, you guys know the story. I've seen some, some famous people put on those type of camps, knowing that there wasn't going to be a spot. There wasn't going to be a spot open. We're telling you there's spots open. Yeah. There's a place. All you got to do is come out there and get it. So again, we thank you guys. 
You know, and the beautiful thing about the tryouts, Coach, is that it levels the playing field. So if you went two years to JUCO and you're going up against a kid to play in Kansas, well, if all we're doing is looking at film and looking at your resume, a kid from Kansas got that job. We go, we go between the lines, we, we throw those resumes out the door. Who got the most game? Who's going to play harder? I love tryouts because that's where we see what, what, what's in the ticker. I don't care about your film. Nobody ever sends me a highlight film when they miss shots. <laughs> they never miss defensive assignment. They never get that. All they show me is the mates and the mates and the dunks. That's great. But I want to see what you do. You win the pickup games? Do you win the games? What do you do in the drills? Are you taking serious? Are you coming ready? I mean, there's a lot of evaluation that goes on from the moment they walk in that gym. Do you carry yourself like a pro? That's what a, a guy that, that works with, with young people is going to do. He's going to watch you go, man, how can I do it? Ooh, I like his potential. I can help him. If they walk in late and they're not ready and they halfway try, I don't care if you're the best player in the gym. I don't care what your resume is. I'm going to coach you. Is that fair? No one else has anything else to say? This will conclude our press conference for the Central Alabama Jaguars. I want to thank everyone in attendance, everyone that's watching, uh, Mr. Magley for coming all the way from Indianapolis. No. Kansas City, Kansas City this time, City. but, but I, I'm from Indianapolis. But it's Kansas City. CM, CM, uh, CNR CEO. So, um, and guys, just prepare to see a whole lot of fun. Um, I, I watched them a lot over the last couple of years. I've seen the way they evolve, you see the players, um, and you can see what happens as you upgrade, so to speak, the the league. Because now it's it's a it's a system where other leagues are coming back and they say, oh yeah, let's grab him, let's get him, let's get him. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. That's a compliment to our league that other leagues are coming and saying, yeah, we want to we want we want to pay him more money. We want to give him this opportunity. And our contracts allow our players to leave. Other leagues will make the contracts where you got to pay the team some money to let the kid leave. Now, we don't own you. We own the right to the market. We want you to get a good job. We want, I don't care if it's the playoffs that's going to cost you a championship. If that young man can play three more months someplace else for a lot more money, you need to go on and get going because that's what it's all about. That will, that will get us you – know, it's, 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 it's kind of like the Old Testament, right? Abraham beget Isaac, and, and Isaac beget Jacob. Well, these other players be getting us some more people if they go on and get out of here. They be getting it, and that's how it works. You know, the more guys we get placed, the more we're going we're gonna to get it done. Yes, sir. Even when the season's over, we time our season to end when the NBA does. That's for a reason. Because the next week, the NBA goes to Las Vegas. And for two weeks, the whole basketball world is in Las Vegas. We do a summer league there for all of our guys, for free. Last year, we were blessed enough that we could take care of most of the hotel rooms. So what league is actually doing an event for free, just trying to get them show? That's what our job is. You do us right, we're going to do everything we can to help you fulfill your dream.